Thank you. Let me give you one of mine. Please have a seat with me. Thank you. So I know we've spoken a few times over the phone, but it's great to finally put a face to the name. And thank you. Likewise. Well, thank you for taking the time to meet with me today. Yeah, absolutely. But before we get started, I actually wanted to congratulate you on your recent move to Pinecrest. Thank you. I know the uh, the cause of the move was unfortunate. It's a little rough. Yeah, definitely. But this is a beautiful property that I've actually known for many years. Oh, cool. And uh, So you yeah. played here? No, no, no. My uncle was actually a member uh, and during my time here at Florida State. I was here on weekends having lunch, enjoying the amenities. You know, it's definitely hard to stay away. Cool. And uh, you know, that's why I'm frankly jealous that you get to work here every day. And uh, Have you always wanted to get into the golf and country club industry? So, I, I enjoy golf, but mm -hmm. clearly I'm not uh, out on the greens as a, a golf pro. Mm -hmm. right. And I uh, always kind of had a knack for hospitality. Mm -hmm. So, course management seemed like a, uh, a good fit. Right. right, absolutely. Well, a lot like you, I grew up in a, I have the similar care to keep these golf and country clubs beautiful and running as best they can just from the other side of the table. I grew up in Sarasota, Florida, where we have many similar clubs. And as I mentioned, uh, I was actually attending this country club for a little while. So, Awesome. Do you have a membership with us? Uh, I do not. I was mostly on as a guest. But hey, if uh, maybe we could work something out, then that's just a little... Uh, you know, cherry on top, wouldn't it? <laughs> it? It'd be nice, but I will caution you that you can always play here as a non-member or uh, play under your, your uncle's membership. Absolutely. But the board actually instituted a policy that uh, because it's a shareholder club, mm -hmm. there's a conflict of interest policy. Right. So I'm actually uh, glad right. you're not a member. Oh, it's not too bad. <laughs> so, if, well, if you were a member, mm -hmm. I'd have to say, well, thanks for coming in. Uh, mm -hmm. You want a free round of golf, but we can't do business together mm -hmm. because of that conflict of interest. Absolutely. I'm glad it's your your uncle who's the member. Definitely. So keep coming dodge, back and dodge the bullet on that one. Hey, if, you're, if you're ever around, ask for me and I'll uh, buy a beer at the clubhouse. And Absolutely. I appreciate happy that. To have you. All right, great. Well, the whole reason I'm here today is to kind of probe around, get a better feel for your business and some of the risks that you're facing. And so I can hopefully get back with my team at Seminole. Sure. And we can put together a program that can help you better protect Pinecrest and okay. all of its interests. And so before we get started, I would like to just make note of whether or not there's a specific time frame that we're going to need to adhere to moving forward with this yes. process? Yes. Um, as you know, the policy uh, expires, renews, whatever they call it, on, mm -hmm. uh, on June 1st. But my goal is to have this completely wrapped up, signed, sealed, delivered, sure. uh, whatever we're going to do, by, uh, by May 1st, 30 days out. That mm -hmm. also gives us a little bit of a pad for everything to go up to the board and be voted on. Sure. Um, so May 1st is, is really what I'd like the target to be. Mm -hmm. Sooner is better, but May 1st okay. is the target. All right, absolutely. And so you mentioned a uh, board. Mm -hmm. uh, outside of you, what are some of the other decision makers in sure. this process? Um, so I've been tasked to? with holding these meetings and really getting mm -hmm. everything you know, tied up with a nice neat little bow sure. to hand to the insurance committee, which is three members of the board. Um, if they like everything, they're going to present it to the board. And of course, they'd probably invite you to that meeting or okay. someone from Seminole. Right. Um, if they don't like something, they're going to hand it back to me to work on further with you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the process. Um, so you're kind of doing the grunt work here, of course. and then I hand that off to the committee. If the committee likes it, then it goes to the full board for a vote, and if they vote affirmative, then uh, it's time to ink contracts. Okay, great. So you're the primary for contact then? Yes, Okay. at, at this point in the meeting. And, and I will continue to be, okay. um, but again, so you understand, you know, it wouldn't be me like actually signing on the dotted line, it would be yes. uh, the board president. Okay, great. So keeping that in mind, uh, just so we could begin this process of fleshing out maybe where some risks are that you're already aware of and maybe some yeah. that you might not be aware of, 
what are some of your, your basic operations? I know I, I've been around here, but just as a little refresher, make sure we have everything yeah. down accurately. Uh, you know, what level of amenities do you have? I remember swimming pools, clubhouses, yep. all of that. So we actually don't have a pool. Okay. Uh, but we do have, as you can see, an amazing clubhouse. Yes. Um, great facility. We do do some rentals for uh, parties, weddings, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, the restaurant, uh, obviously, is full service. Yes. Uh, has a bar. Mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, the golf course operations, right. uh, carts, cart barn, um, mm -hmm. all of the outbuildings on the course, whether they're restrooms or rain shelters. Mm -hmm. um, the course itself, um, you know, obviously, if a, a green right. gets gets torn up or destroyed, that's mm -hmm. a huge problem for us Absolutely. because if you can't play the course, you're not taking in green fees and cart fees, mm -hmm. and the revenue hit is tremendous. And yes, then, definitely. You also get a reputational hit there as well, so that there's, it'd be, it'd be very bad if uh, there was damage to the, the actual course, let alone mm -hmm. the building as well. Right. So damage to the course would then that be a major concern of yours? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know what what we need to do is have something in place where if there were to be another storm like Michael that rolled through, right? Um, we we'd love to have something in place that we just knew how are we going to react and how are we going to get this fixed as soon as possible, sure. and then you know. What insurance protection do we have to, mm -hmm. to help us make that happen? Absolutely. Well, outside of the typical property, property coverage, which can very easily be extended to cover all of your golf courses, mm -hmm. um, are you aware of business income coverage? Um, that's the thing that it like pays you if you're closed. Or... Absolutely. Uh, the purpose of that is it becomes effective once your business is no longer operational. It'll re it'll indemnify you for lost profits, and you can also include extra expense in there. For any measures that can be that must be taken to reopen and become operational at the same level again. Awesome. Because in the long run, that's going to save everyone money because the insurance doesn't have to pay you for that income for a longer period if you're able to get operational sooner. We need it. And so, if that's something that we could look into, then yes, I think we'll get some materials on that. Absolutely. Um, do you have any other pressing concerns about the physical? Exposures um, that you might have. I want to make sure we have good debris removal coverage. Mm -hmm. so, something happened uh, down on the, the coast where, uh, you know, we had trees down all over the place, of course. And where it was like three hundred dollars to have right. a tree hauled away the day before the storm, it was mm -hmm. like three grand the day after. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's a big concern um, in terms of that on the course mm -hmm. is debris removal. Not only do we have uh, enough. Coverage, or I don't know, I think it's included as like a percentage of the overall limits or something. But mm -hmm. I want to make sure that's sufficient. And I also, right. if there's any way to like pre plan uh, a tree service or something, I don't know if, if you know anything about that. But mm -hmm. you know, some way to come up with stuff to, to again be like, okay, if X happens, we're going to do Y right. um, with our insurance program. That mm -hmm. would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, as far as your concern there about having something outside of the insurance in place. I absolutely agree. That's one of the areas where I pride myself on stressing very heavily is outside of just having adequate coverages, is having sufficient uh, risk management, safety, and disaster recovery programs mm -hmm. in place. Yeah, that's it. That's what I was talking about, disaster absolutely. recovery plan. Because uh, as you might have mentioned on the phone, uh, that's something that there was, you know, that, that became an issue back at yeah. uh, the previous country club was when this hurricane came through and uh, yeah we got nailed we, to, we had no protocols Absolutely. you know we had an insurance program but no disaster protocols sure. so if that's something that you know Seminole is able to, to help design for us mm -hmm. that's that's amazing and I think we absolutely can we have an extremely talented team on board with a lot of experience who have seen this a few times we cover Capital City Country Club here in town great uh, we cover the Seminole golf course that's currently under construction and so We've got experience with this type of exposure, and I think we can definitely help you uh, put some similar programs into place. Yeah, and is that something that sounds good to you? It does. All right, we can get on there right away. And so, going off of that, um, I know that you mentioned that your insurance program hasn't been reviewed in three years. Yep, we've got some random voice each time we call on the mm -hmm. other end of the phone up in in Hotlanta. And, yeah, <laughs> uh, we really have no relationship with them, so it's it's refreshing to have someone who sure. you know, got in his car and drove 20 minutes over here sure. and is local. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And there, there's a lot that comes with being local outside of just accessibility, but uh, having that regional experience, having that regional expertise 
in, in someone from uh, Tallahassee. Absolutely. But, uh, so anyways, continuing on with that, if the insurance program hasn't been reviewed in three years, does the same go for your for Pinecrest disaster recovery, risk management, and safety programs as well? I don't even know. Um, okay. Right now, I'm pretty sure that we don't have a disaster recovery plan, right. um, which is why I kind of reacted right. the way I did to that. I'm like, let's do it, let's do it. Um, the other two, you know, I, I get it. They need to be living, breathing documents, protocols, and uh, I don't think anything's been touched. I mean, these mm -hmm. guys are just up in Atlanta doing their thing, and, and we're, I don't know, a file number or whatever. Yeah, I, I completely understand that. And so for disaster recovery program, we would basically just need to assess, which I already got here, all the different structures that you have mm -hmm. and your greatest concerns, uh, those being the debris removal on the course, and, uh, you know, another one that I've seen come up and I believe happened at the previous country club as well was food spoilage as a result oh, yeah. of power outage. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe there's a level of that on our current policy, but okay. I'll, I'll have my assistant send you the full policy. Oh, of course. And, uh, you know, that's, again, part of the reason why I love that we're sitting here having this conversation mm -hmm. is everything needs to be reviewed. I need to know that, that we have adequate limits. You know, the, the program three years ago what was good enough for the board to vote on mm -hmm. to accept and, and mm -hmm. provided what they felt they needed. Right. But you know, three years is a lot of time, especially in a of growing course. business environment. Of course. Especially they're lucky that they have you here now because oh, having had first hand experience with such a loss in the past, uh, I think it's gonna bring bring a lot to the preparedness that Pinecrest is gonna have going. Or forward. just a fun level of paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as long as it doesn't keep you up at night. There you go. <laughs> But uh, anyways, to that to that point of the food spoilage, there are certain coverages available mm -hmm. that are specifically geared towards uh, large pieces of machinery that are integral to the structure, such as a large refrigeration mm -hmm. unit. So if power goes out on that, you get a boiler and machinery coverage, which would reimburse you for all the spoilage as a result of that loss of power to that unit. And uh, let me ask you something. So this, sure. this happened in uh, in Lynn Haven. Yes. Um, if the power line gets knocked down, like the, the stuff at the club, like on our property, is perfect, untouched. Mm -hmm. um, is it still covered if a tree two miles away knocks down at a transmission line or a transformer gets blown out by a lightning strike? Is, is it still covered or does the, the stuff have to happen on my premises to be covered? To, I would have to check and get you the most concrete answer that I can, oh, but cool. from, from my understanding, um, if it is a covered cause of loss, which you know a tree falling as a result of a storm would be, and you suffer a consequent power outage, and food spoils as a result of that, you know the proximate cause would be the storm, and so down the line through the chain of events, uh, I believe that would be covered. But I will absolutely yeah, check, double on check on that and get back to you. I appreciate for it. Sure. And so one other thing that I want to make sure that we touch on. Um, is outside of the physical damage and loss that can occur, I like to make sure that there are adequate protections for the people as well. And a big part of that are your employees. Yes. And so one area that I would like to touch on very briefly is that of the landscape maintenance. Are those your own employees or are those contracted out? So we have them all on, uh, on W-2s, so they are mm -hmm. employees. Uh, okay. We've got about 90 total employees, including clubhouse staff. And mm -hmm. About two thirds of them are part-time. And uh, one third are full time. Okay. Okay. Two thirds full time, one third. Great. So, uh, as far as the landscape employees, I actually worked some landscaping uh, cool. a few years back. And what I saw is that there were a lot of employees coming in and out of there. Very transient. Absolutely. And so, do you think it's a concern that, that possibly, or at least I've seen it, uh, other people have had this concern that when you have so many transient employees, there's a much greater risk for them to bring employment practices lawsuits. Just for whatever reason, you might catch someone just trying to make a, a buck, but if you only have an employee there for a week that you don't even remember them. I worry um, a lot more about the cart girl and yeah. uh, my restaurant staff on that one. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Uh, EPL is, is definitely something, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's what it's called, that, that we yes. need. Yes, employment um, practices. So like that, that needs to be part of any package, okay. please. And, mm -hmm. and I need to know as well uh, that it, it covers, because I know some of them are more restrictive or less restrictive, that it covers the, the full gamut of uh, what those crazy personal injury attorneys mm -hmm. tell them on 2 a.m. commercials right. they should sue us for. And that's where a lot of that comes up. So if your concern is that you might be exposed to these lawsuits as a result of all these transient employees, 
then it's I believe that it's definitely important to have this coverage. Yeah. Because regardless of whether there's any basis to the suit, just the fact that they bring it automatically triggers you the, pay the defense lawyer. costs. It, absolutely. I gotta tell you, Shakespeare had it right, man. Kill all the lawyers. <laughs> well, maybe not all of them. <laughs> but most of the this personal injury guys. Yeah. <laughs> Morgan and Morgan. <laughs> yeah. For the people, no. Mm -hmm. Morgan and Morgan. Or Morgan. For the money. <laughs> For the money. Absolutely. So if that uh, is something that would address your concern about uh, in transient employees, then that's something that we'll definitely put together. It's for not you even the with. transient thing. It's just you know we're we're ultimately a hospitality industry business, so you mm -hmm. have a lot of low wage earners. Right. And those are the people that are going to come up with, well, I actually worked this long, and they only paid me for that long, or you know, it happens, that's right? right? Like. <laughs> Really?